Man, sure is nice to relax by the ocean with a view of the mountains. It's kind of the whole appeal of the Sea to Sky Highway anyway. This weather definitely sucks. I was hoping to see the sun go down. Luckily, my Suzuki RV125 has a high-low gearbox, and here in this river valley, we can climb probably a quarter mile in about a half hour, so maybe if we get going now, we can punch through the weather and get a second chance at sunset. Let's see what she can do. Suzuki built this thing in 1975, and what these little two-strokes offer is simplicity, not torque. So the high-low gearbox is really a solution marketed as an upgrade. Sadly, we don't see dual range bikes that much anymore. Four strokes became so much more reliable and produced tons of torque, so steeper gear ratios are more than achievable. It makes sense. This is just a band-aid fix for a gutless bike that aspired to be called a dual sport, but these are fun. And could you imagine one of these on a T-dub? It's like a hidden weapon for a bike under gun. Now the internet is almost completely devoid of any visuals on how a system like this works and uh, luckily JB found an old TC90 on the bow of the Titanic so we don't even have to put it back together. Let's rip this thing apart and see what's inside. There's actually a TS-90 in the carburetors inside the side case. Gross. Oh, what the hell? It's spider. Spider eggs. Oh. See? It's balls. We're kicking it in the balls. It's called Suzuki's Posi Select Mechanism, and for those who care, it's a constant mesh and a return type transmission integrated with each other. The gist of it is whenever you kick this lever here, it moves this little duck foot across this ball on a spring, which kind of gives it that old school feel. And with some hardware that I already destroyed, it's going to move this little push rod in and out of the drive shaft. And on the other side of this push rod is a cone, and that cone drives ball bearings up and into little cavities in the inside of some gears or back down to let those gears spin freely again. Check this out. When the rod is pushed in, these balls are up and this gear can spin freely. That's gonna activate one gear set. When I pull the rod out, that ball drops in and this one locks into place which allows an entirely different ratio of gears to be running. This is how, with one motion, we're able to engage and disengage completely different gear ratios for climbing or for traveling at high speeds. It's so simple, durable, and I love it. And that's how this little red 125 is gonna haul 200 pounds of clone meat up this mountain and out of the weather. Slowly. We're not there yet, but this is nice. Let's keep going. So, we'll need to kick it into touring mode as much as possible if we want to beat the sun. Only utilizing trailing mode when we need to torque to climb steeper sections. And that's why other antiques like a DR or a KLR or your granddad's VCR would never implore dual transmission because those bikes have torque to spare and wide-ish ratios. So why then is it that every time I top out on my DR, I wish I could kick a lever like this? I know the answer is changing the sprocket or just buying a Tenere 700, but the little endorphin spike that I get every time I transform this buzzy little smoker into a rock crawler, it hits like nothing else. By the way, those mountains are taller than this one and there's clouds above them, so I think we're hosed. In case you're wondering, 
These are the Luzons from Flying Eyes. They're not safety rated like many of the other fine products from our generous sponsor, but I wear them anyway as a splash guard when I'm working on bikes because I don't want to get any oil or any of this shit in my eyes. Plus, they have this magnetic lens feature, so if the chrome on this hog ends up shining too bright, I can always just pop these bad boys on, take it down a notch. I wear them when I'm wrenching, I wear them when I'm riding, and the flexibility of the frame helps them last a little bit longer when I end up sitting on them. Thanks, Flying Eyes. The transmission in that TS was in such great shape compared to the rest of the bike. I think it's safe to assume the same parts in this little RV are going to last me and my future selves a few more decades. Uh, damn it. That's so much worse than before. I mean, what was I thinking? Get above the clouds? I mean, I know I was born yesterday, but... I feel pretty stupid. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a relic. It's a nostalgic novelty of a simpler time. And you can still find these high-low gearboxes on quads, which hopefully makes those less boring somehow. But for me, on a motorcycle, kicking one of these levers feels more like I'm kicking and screaming while being dragged into the future. So if you see one of these or a TC90 or a G4100 and you think you have what it takes to buy it and clean it up, do it. I promise you, you won't regret it. It'll get you high when you're feeling low and should make for a much more fun summer of riding eventually. Thanks for watching.